I guess the Torah really doesn't want women. No, it's not that, that she embarrassed him. It's, it's, it's him embarrassing parts. You embarrassed by those parts of yours? If the, maybe if they were seen in public. How much would you Is pay? How much would with you them? pay? How much would you pay not to have your, your your parts seen in public? Two hundred dollars. That's it. Yeah. So for two, if I give you two hundred bucks, Ooh. would you go running out naked right now? No, 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 no. no. I guess maybe five thousand. Fifteen thousand. For fifteen, if I had like fifteen thousand money right now, cash, I could give it to you, and you would run out naked. How far would I have to run? You'd have to be seen by, uh, you know, public. Ten people would have to see you. I could get arrested, so I'd say half a million. Half a million. Half a million. I would do it for half a million. I would definitely do it for half a million. I almost did it yesterday for free. Really? Well, yeah. Intentionally? No, it's just that I had to go outside and have time to get dressed. So I was just thinking, man, eh, if nobody looks. <laughs> but um, yeah. So for five hundred thousand dollars. It's interesting, like in the Torah, that they would they'd be pretty strict on this. You shall show her no mercy. You shall cut off her hand. The Torah well, really doesn't like. But it's not. But you're not really going to cut off her hand. No, but it's just it's a way of the Torah saying we're not. We're not. Women ins- don't grab gonads. Right, but you know we're not really going to cut off. Her, to you. We're not really going to cut off her hand, right? Right. That never happens in Torah. That that Islam does that. Right. Islam would cut off her hand, right? But what does Torah say? You're going to. Torah cut, says she's going to pay damage. the monetary damage. It's monetary right. damage. Now, where is it that someone with a severed phallus cannot enter the? The congregation of Israel, um, or with crushed balls. That's in this Torah portion as well. Find yeah. It. Okay. So it's chapter twenty-three, verse two. A man with crushed testicles or a severed phallus shall not enter the congregation of Hashem. This is really like how a lot of people back in Jewish life because of because of uh, the Holocaust and. And just like playground games. What? What? Twenty? One what? Ma- what? Twenty? Chapter twenty-three, verse two. Oh, lo yaboi. A man with crushed testicles Mon- or a severed phallus shall not enter the congregation of Hashem. Oh, it's on this page. That's why I didn't see it. Okay, let's do it down. Yeah, right. What's 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 going on? There? You know, you have to be. Uh, you, have you have to have your full. Yeah. Full Monty. <laughs> you yeah you can't. Uh, that's a pagam. You can't. Uh, it's a blemish. It's a big blemish. So what do we do with those people? I don't know. Are they allowed to come to show? Why not? Maybe we should check. A lot of shows like they check these things before you walk in. I don't know. Check to see if the gonads are crushed or if the phallus is severed. I don't know. I've ne- I've never come across a situation like that in. Modern I don't think you, you've devoted enough time to studying this particular pasuk. <laughs> what can I tell you? But it has to do with uh, back then when, when we had a base of English. No? I mean, but this 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 is still this is Hashem's Torah. I mean, I'm sure there's a great spiritual lesson here. All right, I gotta look it up. It's in Sanhedrin. I'll look it up. It's in my. So that like last week's pasha was so rich, so rich. Oh, here it is. Check this out. Yeah. According to the Ibn, the Ibn Ezra, yeah? Mm-hmm. A petsua daka, it's baiting below aver. It means that the guy's got um, a happy sack, mm-hmm. but he's got no... Uh, no phallus. Yeah. He's just got nothing... Yeah, nothing uh, there. Nothing there. I wonder how he pees. But uh, what does it mean that he can't enter the congregation of the chef? Does that mean he can't belong to Beth Jacob? <laughs> that he can get away Shatara? <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Century City. I guess he can only get a Chabot. That's just real. No, I... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ibn Ezra is going to explain here. Hatam Shalom Yerushal Ke'echem Nekachal Hashem Shemikach. It's something to do like, you know, they don't... He shouldn't take a Jewish woman as a wife. 
It's kind of, it's kind of sad. She'd be pretty disappointed. Uh, it's kind of that's kind of rough. Yeah. That's kind of rough. Yeah, I mean. It, you know what? You know what though? It doesn't surprise me that the next pasuk says Lo Yabo Mamzer uh, Bekahal Hashem. Yeah. That yeah. that it. it uh, a Boston. A, no, that's not a good translation. That's a very bad translation. I want to fix it. A mumser is somebody who is a product from a relationship that's explicitly uh, banned, prohibited in the Torah itself, mm -hmm. such as incest, an incestual relationship, or adultery, a, adultery where it's the man uh, is with another man's wife. Okay? And that's if the children that result from that, now it sees forever. Mm -hmm. Like their kids, all the, forever, even past the tenth generation, mm -hmm. will always be called mamzerim, and they're only allowed to marry other mamzerim. I think they can also marry a convert. I don't have to look into that, but, but um, a lot of converts aren't too fussy if the man's got crushed testicles, seven or eight. Oh, no, one, wait, wait, one thing at a time. Raising moms of right, so they're just th grateful. This is like the really sad ass categories, okay? Because if the person is born a mamzer, I mean, it's obviously not their fault, and so like, they're they're. Limited who they can marry. They can only marry another mumzer. Have you known any mumzer? I don't know any mumzer. My entire life. Rabbis don't inquire. Like they don't want to dig in. They don't want to oh, really? cover a mumzer. Yeah, that's the way it practically works. They don't. Uh, so they don't inquire. They stay away because they do not want to uncover a mumzer because life's just going to be hell for it. But so but here's the thing. Ask. But how? But wait. I think they should. Because you've never known one. Wait a second. I think that they should ask before they get married or whatever because you could be doing an Isra Garaisa. Well, the way, way Yiddish guys practice, they don't inquire purposefully, so they don't... They don't they really? Don't send anyone into the Mamzer category. Okay, because there's certain categories that suck. Mamzer sucks because yeah. you can only marry other Mamzerim. And how many are there? I mean, how many real products of... Like neither you or I have ever knowingly met a Mamzer. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of... Uh, 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 marriages today that they the that like a, a woman or let's say isn't from she gets married to some Jewish guy he doesn't give her a get mm -hmm. and then she remarries and the rabbis don't inquire purposefully so they don't uncover but like her kids are going to be mamzerim technically yes but the way it's practiced is different than the I don't get this. So, I mean, I you might can, have... You can, you can go I, do research. Okay, but I would think that those kids are Mimzerim, and then they'd have to mel marry people like them. Here's... That category is a little bad, but it's not as bad as this one. Waiting for this one? The Suffolk Mumser. The Suffolk Mumser is like the kid who's born to his mother. is a situation I just described. But the question is, did she... Her first marriage really count as a marriage or not? Did they have kosher aiding? Did they have kosher witnesses? She didn't get a get, right? But, like, did she have kosher witnesses, right? And uh, nobody can determine that. We don't know if he's a mumzer or not. So a Suffolk mumzer, if he's a mumzer, he's not allowed to He's only allowed to marry a mumzer. If he's not a mumzer, he's not allowed to marry a mumzer. So who can a Suffolk... We don't know what he is. He can't marry... a Suffolk mumzer. He can't marry anybody. No, he can't marry another Suffolk mumzer because maybe the other mumzer is a real mumzer. And maybe he's not a mumzer. So a Suffolk mumzer has to remain celibate his entire life. Now that's going to suck. That's going to suck, right? Yeah. But look at me. I'm in a category that's tantamount to that. Yeah. I'm in the worst category. I can only marry a Jewish woman who's willing to keep Shabbos, Kashrus, Tahoros, Mishpacha, right? Who's willing to be from, right? And not have kids and never had kids. That's, there is no such woman. No, there's only one. <laughs> and she said no. I was, I was engaged to her and she dumped me. Okay, there's really no one for me out there. Okay, I'm in one of these categories. Okay, I might as well have my balls crushed. Right? Or your phallus severed. Yeah. Or be a mumser. I'll be a mumser, a suffolk mumser. What's the difference? Or all three. You might as well be a mumser with a crushed balls, severed phallus. And then, at least that way, when you're out fighting with another another man, like his wife can't come and grab your non-existent. There you go. So that's one advantage. Right. No, but uh, I don't. I you know it's like these are terrible categories.